Yeah. Okay, here we are with the Half Moon Putney. It gives me great pleasure to be in the company of John Wino Edwards. One only. And tonight you're playing with uh, Rhino's with Finch. Yep. And um, tell us about the name of the tour, because you call it the Save the Rhino Tour, for a very good reason. Uh, yeah, we're doing it in conjunction with Save the Rhino, because... Uh, Oh, joking aside, <laughs> no, it's, uh, you know, the rhinos are in right? deep, yeah, they're in, in uh, deep trouble. And so uh, all the money they can get, I'm hoping, will uh, go, to a, go to a worthy cause, as I say. And we've got a really good thing we've done, which is we just, we've made a load of badges, so that even if you don't want to buy anything yep. substantial, just put a pound in the collection box and get yourself a little Save the Rhino badge. Excellent, all those pounds do add up, so. Absolutely. Excellent. Right to about eight so far. <laughs> and uh, tell us about your band, because it's a free piece. Yep, I've got a, it's a, it's a very, um, because of what I do and because of the calibre of people I like to mm. use, I feel like it's like a football team. I've got, a, I always have a lot of lone players in. There's nobody really who's um, a constant. Um, on this tour, yeah. I've got um, Richard Newman playing drums, who's from Paul Rogers' band, yep. and Deborah Bonham. Yeah. And I've got Jim Kirkpatrick who plays with FM, man of the people, knows everyone going. And tonight for one night only, I've got my son Freddie playing as well. Oh, fantastic. Who did, who did the Riders of Revenge 2 yeah. album, which was um, an amazing experience. You know, I didn't, I didn't have with my kids. I believe your daughter's playing tonight, I believe. My it's daughter's playing there. tonight, she's on first year. She did back in vocals, I only had my son play drums and Freddie yeah. play guitar. So it was a real amazing time. I believe uh, April 20th, you've got in, Jim's office, obviously busy with FM, so you've got yeah, I know. Craig Joyner. Yeah. Join up. So tell us more about Craig. Craig's That's from the back of Romeo's daughter. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yep. yeah. And uh, he's uh, came round to my house yesterday and he with, with, with a furrowed brow and he's learnt it bash. So, I, it's you know, it's a, a real honour for me, actually, that people who I ask to do it, and not only do they do it, do they say, yeah, I, I've not had anyone turn me down yeah. yet. Well, Brian May, you know, Mick Jagger, <laughs> they weren't so keen, but um, yeah. uh, it's just great that they yeah, they'll, they say, yeah, no problem. And then they'll sit down and learn it because uh, it's not, yeah, it sounds really simple, but it isn't. Yeah. It's like quote stuff. It's not actually yeah, yeah. that simple. You know, you, you hear it and it sounds, yeah, just dead simple. It's like it's boogie, but it's harder. Yeah, well, it's, you know, the simple songs are really hard to write and, and, uh, with a simple song, unless it's something like um, Born Under a Bad Sign, which is my yeah. favourite song ever, oh, right. um, and because it's got that lyric, yeah. if it wasn't for bad luck, <laughs> that bad luck, I wouldn't know no luck at all. Yeah. That is just so amazing um, for me. Um, I, I keep saying, um, I've noticed. <laughs> and that's because I forgot what I was talking about. Hold on. Um, um. <laughs> oh, it's just, yeah, just very gratifying that people will um, yeah. come and and we learn the stuff before. I think the secret, the secret of Rhino's Revenge, I only saw you for the first time myself this year at uh, Shepherd's Empire. Oh, yeah. But it, it's a fun band. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of work gone into the songs, yeah. a lot, but you have to work hard to have a good time quite often, mm. really, you know, and that's what I've done. And they're, 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 I'm playing songs that are 20 years old that I still really like, and funnily enough, I'm doing a song called The Republican, which um, I wrote about George W. Bush, and it's much more relevant now. today. Yeah, exactly, oh, yeah. God, is it? Yeah, so, you know, maybe I'm some sort of a prophet <laughs> of doom. <laughs> you know, it's good to see, I suppose, you're, you're a man who still writes about politics, but also there's I one song. I want, music, I want music to get drunk to, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, one, one great song, My, my Name is Stan. Yeah, my about my dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's actually about your actual dog. The late, the late Liberated yeah. Stan. Uh, we've got, we've just... He was a schnauzer who had real attitude. He was a yeah. real, you know, come on, nope, <laughs> come on, nope, I'll come when I'm ready. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and he's like, he'd come and he knew he'd get a little kick, you know, yeah. you little bastard, you know. But he said, oh, go on then, kick me in, you know. <laughs> and, you know, I wasn't going, I wasn't punching his lights out, but, um, and we were morti, we were, I, I don't know if you've heard dogs, but we were devastated when he died because, mm. I got him when the we, well we we got him when the kids were young, and they really wanted a dog, but we hadn't told them we were going to get yeah. one. And he arrived, and it was just so there was the five of us because we've got three kids and Stan. Yeah. You know, we were the unit, and uh, we've got a new one though. And it, but his name is Walter after oh, Walter right. Becker from Steely Dan. But <laughs> it's not doesn't quite have the same rhyming. <laughs> <laughs> rhyming capabilities as Stan. And what's your family think of um, my name is Stan? They love it. Has been immortalised. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's a real, it's a very affectionate song. Yeah. 
Right. And um, let's talk about the set list, because you've got quite a lot of originals that you play in a set. But also a few status quo numbers, like uh, Bella Fist of Man, Bad News, yep. Two Way Traffic, all songs <laughs> that you had a sort of a writing credit with. Yeah, they uh, normally the the uh the more obscure status quo yeah. songs. <laughs> Although uh, Two Way Traffic. Two Way a true yeah. fix song. Yeah, excellent live number. Yeah, um, but one thing that occurred to me when I watched you at the show I'll last year. What's up with me? Yeah, go on. But, um, I thought these songs are really good. They stand up, but it's like uh, I was thinking to myself, I don't know why aren't he's on a Status Quo album, you know. So, do you get much say of what songs you can input into Status Quo? It's a very um, the remit is a very difficult one, you know, mm -hmm. because um, uh, we. I think that lyrically speaking, my lyrics are a tad more direct. Mm. And, and I think with Quo, we tend to, um, they'll be about a feeling, if you like, as opposed to a subject. Yeah. An emotion, and so you have to write, you know, and it's a very, it's, it's, it's a very specific thing, status quo. You know, uh, more so than a lot of bands. Can you put all your songs on the table, or is it, you know, or is it a case of, John, have you got anything? I'll only ever put anything up that I, that I think could go on, and I, I was, I got three songs on the last studio album I did. I think it was the last, the last proper studio album. Apart, we did this film soundtrack, which was called the uh, the, the uh, Fiji film. Quid Pro Quo. Yeah. No, the Quid like Pro Quo. I had three songs on there, and I put three songs up yeah. for it. So that was, you know, that's yeah. I don't, I don't put anything up there that I don't think should be on there. Uh -huh. And I normally get my way. And one, to a point. one other, coming back to the gig as well, yeah. um, one other major observation I noticed, because you, you, sometimes you get ridiculed, if you don't mind me saying, for the, the no-neck bass, but when you're on your solo band, you're playing a bass with, with a neck, so... Well, A, I don't give a shit if I get ridiculed, <laughs> because I, I just... I, love, I, I, I play a status bass, yeah. so I'm actually the status of quo. But, um, <laughs> That, the bass I play on my thing is the best bass I've ever played. It's my favourite bass, but it's not quite right for Quo. And the other thing is, when I started with Quo, Francis and I used to do so many... Uh, whether people think it's good now or not, yeah. I don't care. But we used to do so many things, and we had one thing that I'd, I'd seen James Brown do. And the trumpet players were going like that, yeah. and then one would duck, and the other one would go <laughs> like that, and swirl the trumpet where his head had been. And yeah. Mike was, it looked amazing. And Francis and I used to do that with, with the bass, and he used to duck. Yeah. And a couple of times I actually caught his hair. As I went past, it's, you know, look at those few hairs on the end of the base. But if I had a head of base, I probably yeah. would have fractured his skull a few times. So we decided that the way to go yeah. was yeah. with the headless. And it was it was the 80s as well. Yeah, it yeah. just stuck, you know. Well, it was. That's very much a thing of the 80s. Remember Tears yeah. of Fears used to have one. I suppose that, like, written away, it goes back to your nickname, you know, Ryan. It comes from your, the Judy Suit Band. Yeah. So you're a little bit clumsy, so... Yeah. <laughs> Are you still clumsy now? Oh, totally. <laughs> oh, I, I dropped my guitar tonight. I, I, yeah. I went, I was talking to someone, I went there to get me a cup of tea and I forgot that it was plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, stateless guitars yeah. are very, very, very solid. And kids, if you don't buy Mark, but if your parents don't buy you Mark bass amps and stateless basses, they don't love you. <laughs> and, um... Let's go back to way back to the sort of the beginning. Sort of, sort of, you could say your, your career. Well, Julie Sutton mentioned she's got a new song with um, Beverly Craven oh, and right. Julia Fordham, which is brilliant. They're doing a tour together. Oh, right. I saw her live recently, actually. Yeah, she's still got the voice and everything. Yeah. Oh, Julie's got an yeah. amazing voice. Always struggled with stage fright. Always. Mm -hmm. She was the most nervous before, most nervous performer I've ever pl ever played with. Oh well, who's taught you the most? Because you've got some big names like Peter Green, Texas. Who's taught me the most? No one. Um, you just pick. You just pick stuff. I, actually, I know a lot about discipline from Dexys. Mm. Um, I loved being in that band. I really yeah. loved it because, um, you know, we used to get mobbed. I used to walk really slowly because <laughs> I used to like getting mobbed. <laughs> but um, uh, no, I liked them because um, there, there was a real strong work ethic in that mm. band. Not that it's not in, a, in every other band, but it's. You know, we would rehearse from 10 till 6, and you would come out of the rehearsal room absolutely shattered. You know, we'd we do 10 till our past. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, don't, we just don't work so hard, so, yeah. so much. And that was, that was uh, of course, being younger then, you know, yeah. it was uh, quite easy. I believe there was another learning curve you learned from Dexys, to uh, make sure you're talking to the right person on the phone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> As you can't believe <laughs> news gets about, well, it, it wasn't that bad, but... Um, yeah. I thought I was talking to someone else called Kevin and I was moaning about something. He said, hey, John, it's Kevin. <laughs> oh, hello, Kevin, how are you getting on? Oh, fuck, I'm pissed off, you know. And then, John, it's Kevin. Oh, Kevin. 
How you doing? But I didn't get the sack for that. Yeah. I got the sack because they phoned me up. I said there's a rehearsal tomorrow, and I said I can't. I'm going on tour with the Climax Blues Band because there was mm. nothing, nothing in. Yeah. And they said, oh, well, okay then, and that was that. You can get it right. Mm. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but no, then I went back to Dexys, funnily enough, um, and I, I did an album called Don't Stand Me Down, which is a uh, I note is in the Observer list of the top hundred, top great hundred greatest British albums of all time. Mm, and I that was really weird because they were. Um, I used to have to hide outside the studio while this other bass player was in there because they'd mm. phone me up. They knew they were going to wipe him as soon as he was out the door. But I knew him. Yeah. They said, you, you just come down, hide in the car park. And he, he, he'd go and you'd suddenly see Helen come out. John? <laughs> <laughs> and I'd go in and do it. That was great. I mean, I, I, I have nothing but... Um, uh, and nothing the, um, but praise for Kevin Rowland. I think yeah. he's got a, a great degree of integrity, well, yeah, and, yeah. He's, and he's actually a very nice bloke. Oh, there's some excellent songs as well. Oh, only a lot. Yeah, uh, very original. Uh, you got to work with Peter Green. Yeah, that in was his amazing. sort of uh, wilderness years. How did that come about? Um, a friend of mine was doing playing second guitar on his album, and the bass player couldn't make a couple of sessions, and. Um, I went down, and it was really, it was a very sad time, really, you know, to see, because I mean, I'm a huge fan. Mm. One of my first singles was Man of the World, you know, and it's still oh, such yeah, a, you know, yeah. and it's such a, plea, a cry for help. Yeah. And they didn't, nobody, I've watched a documentary, and Mick Fleetwood said, we didn't, we just didn't get it at all. You know, we couldn't understand. We were all yeah. such a good time, and, and outwardly, he was having a good time as well. Um, but we were playing away, and sometimes you'd be playing, you just sort of, ooh. And he'd stop playing and he'd just stand in there in the middle of the studio going, oh. And then other times he'd play for about 10 seconds and you would just think, oh my God, I'm playing with Peter yeah, Green. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is, you know, yeah. it's like, it was wow. You what know? was it like as a person then? Was, was well, at that time, or? I've met him since a few times. He's a lot better now. Yeah. I haven't seen him for about 10 years. I don't know if he's retired or not. Actually. I think he has, yeah. Um, and he was a lot better, but I was... I would be working with him all day and I'd go to the pub in the evening with my friend playing guitar and he would be there and he'd say, who's your mate? Mm. So he wouldn't, he wouldn't have remembered me. But he said one great thing to me. I was doing the bass on one of these tracks called Baby When the Sun Goes Down. And he looked at me and said, no! I said, what? what? He said, you're taking, me to Shepherd's, you're taking me to Birmingham and I want to go to Shepherd's Bush. <laughs> I thought brilliant. I think that was a famous saying of his, actually, because he mentioned about that in a Fleetwood Mac jam in the early days. And he used the same expression. You know, you take, oh, really? you take me to, I don't know, Skegness, and you want, I want to go to Brighton. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just oh, sure, yeah, yeah. I just never forgot it. <laughs> I, I mean, I've had, um, I always had an inner belief that I, uh, well, I know, I just knew that I was either going to be in, a pr in prison yeah. or I'd be in a big band and um, and I I, paid, I did my apprenticeship and I made yeah. my own and I've had the most incredible career. I was like, yeah, that's all these, how you come towards status quo really because you, you recorded with Vic Parfit and he recorded the delivery album that did come out but posthumously he has us under Over and Out. But had, that, I, had that come about before you joined Crow? Well that Vic was Parfitt, that's no weird you, you know um, in my career I got the job with Dexter's Midnight Runners because I was, it's a, it was a good rhino actually. I'd, mm. I'd recorded a single under my own steam and I was just about, I was going to Rocket Records to have an A&R meeting and I realised I'd left a cassette at home and I ran back and the phone was there. I thought, shall I ring the phone? Shall I answer mm. it? And I answered it and it was a guy who I'd been, who I'd been doing sessions for called Steve Torch and he said, Kevin's just asked me if I play bass for Dexys because they've sacked the bass player and he mm. said, I, I've told him I can't because I'm not good enough, but I know someone that is. And if you want to go down to Good Earth, give them a call, they've got Good Earth Studios and they're expecting a call. And two hours later, I was in Dexys. Kim Wilde, I got I, uh, the, the first message on my first ever answer phone was from the guitar player from Kim Wilde that he'd be given my mm. number, saying they were auditioning the next day. And um, the session with with Rick came about because I was going to Chipping Norton Studios. My car broke down halfway down, and it and it was it wasn't. I was I think I was getting paid for the session. I thought, okay, well it's cheaper. It's cheaper to get a cab home and just leave the car and get it fixed. It's more expensive to get. A, but I thought, no, I'm a, I'm a pro. I'm going to do that. And the producer was Mike Vernon, who said I'm doing an album. The Norwegian guy. I get there. There's a Pip Williams, the producer, who's playing guitar, and he said, would you like to do a couple of tracks from Rick Parfit's album? And I met Rick in. January 85. I remember meeting him. What? What? <laughs> what was your first impressions of him? Great. 
Yeah, it was fun, really good fun. Yeah. And he did he did like the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> um no, and then when I uh, and that went on from that, yeah, and it was just really good fun and I was then back I went back with I then back, went back with Kim Wilde and I was doing a tour with Judy Zucas. Well I was just doing little projects, you know, and I did in the army now. Excuse me, I've got a gig going, I've got it down there. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> look at that. Um, and um, I just got the, the, the I did the choir as a session. They said, "Would you like to do a few gigs?" I said, "Okay, yeah, you know." And, uh, mm. and that was that. I mean, I remember the, I was amazed the um, the, the amount of drugs and alcohol yeah. when I joined that band. I mean, I, you know, I was, I, was you was you dubbing yourself? Huh? Was you a party man yourself in the eighties? No, not really. Yeah. No, I was more of a more of us having a smoke and just yeah. sitting down. But um, uh, no, then I met Andrew Bound, the keyboard player, who basically, I'm um, Rhino the Wino. And uh, <laughs> Andrew is, um, I was a very willing student, put it like yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, Andrew's given, gave me my love for wine yeah. and uh, some of the finer things in life. But no, I've never, I've never been, I've never been into cocaine or anything. It's, yeah, just, yeah. it's just, it doesn't, I don't need anything. I don't mean I don't need it, but I talk enough. I think you can know when you're surrounded by people who are heavily into it, you can, See what it's doing, and well, as, as the Osborne call it, waffle dust. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I mean, life's too short, really. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's just moving away from all that. It's not going yeah. to everything into that. No, no, um, no. Got any, got any drugs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my great Steve Marriott story. I played with Steve Marriott <laughs> in um, in the seventies. And I, uh, we were we were walk. I was in a band. We were playing in a really hip club in Paris, and. Um, one of the guys in the band knew one of the guys in Steve Marriott's band. He mm. saw Steve Marriott on a, in a cafe in, in the, the opera, I think it was. And um, he walked up and said, hello, Steve, is Ian Wallace with you? He said, no, got any drugs? <laughs> <laughs> and was, no, but we know someone yeah, that has. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> I ended up in a band one night with John Bonham on the drums, <laughs> Steve Marriott. How do you know all this? I have a little whispers, you know. <laughs> John Bonham on drums, Steve Marriott on, on vocals. Boz Burrell on percussion, Simon Kirk, who's my all-time drumming hero, and I can't, right, yeah. I've seen him a couple, I can't bring myself to talk yeah. to him, I'm such a fan. I hear he's a lovely, he lovely bloke. He is very I've interviewed him, isn't he? Nice yeah, really nice bloke. Yeah. Um, yeah, oh, I mean, oh, Free, it's the reason I'm here. Yeah. I, I went to see Free on the 7th of November yeah. 1969 as a guitar player and violin player, because yeah. that's my first instrument, and uh, I just walked out there, bass player, that's it. Yeah. And, uh, and here I am. Oh. I in a van. <laughs> yeah. you, you do free cover sometimes in your set, don't you, I believe? Uh, we do sometimes, yeah. I mean, I'm... It's a bit Superman's cape for me. Yeah. You know, I mean... Although I did see the guy with Paul Rogers, and I watched him do the Mr Big solo, and it was crap. And he was doing it with Paul Rogers. I mean, I know the Mr Big solo. Yeah. I did it at a base... I did a clinic a couple of years ago, and it took me two days to yeah. learn the solo that Andy Fraser did at yeah. 18. <laughs> It's so off the. It's so yeah. off the wall. Everything he did, it was so angular. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, let's pretty go back. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, game. We sort of went off track there a bit. Do you want to start square eighty six? Do you remember your first gig with them? Was it in Croatia, I believe, or not? No, first gig. Uh, I think the first gig was in Dubai. Oh wow. We went out to shoot the video for Rolling yeah. Home, and yeah. we did two nights at the tennis club there, and then we went on to. So I suppose that's a nice introduction in some ways, isn't it? It's not, not so much pressure. Yeah. Well, when went to Abu Dhabi, which I should have, um, yeah, and then well, I think my first UK gig, I, I believe... No, no, no. Mm. My first UK gig, I believe, was in a tent in Swindon. <laughs> and then we do, and, and then I think maybe there was a couple more gigs away, and then we started doing the, um, the Queen stuff. Yeah. Which I never got to hear, I never got to see at all. Because we we just used to do a runner after yeah, every yeah. show. I, all I ever heard was da 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 da. They start with one yeah. vision. I never heard anything more. But imagine at that time in your life, like Nedworth, in front of hundred thousand people. Oh, okay, of course, there's Wembley Stadium as well, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two nights. Yeah. So the big crowds. That must have been pretty nerve wracking for you, I imagine. Was it? Yeah. Not, no. No, I'm very confident. Good. This is this is far more. Yeah, it's okay. That's interesting. Yeah. So a smaller crowd. And I think, and you were finding quite as well. All yeah. of us. Yeah. Playing little gigs is, you know. You had those small gigs, like the Ruskin Arms, that promotional tour thing. Yeah, that was, yeah, that, yeah. Well, that, that was um, different. They were, there was a lot of moaning going on that tour mm. because they thought that the idea was uh, the... the well, there was too many dates, wasn't it, I think? Well, no, it was just the concept wasn't yeah. that good, you know. They did, you know, Francis doesn't drink. <laughs> it was like a red rag to a bull, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know um, and, and no, it wasn't... It, I didn't find it particularly enjoyable. I mean, I, I would, mm. 
But you know, we were in there with a fucking great back line, you know. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it wasn't. Um, although I've got something I've so funny for some footage which I. <laughs> You want to stop? No, no, no. Jeff Richards. Just a little reminder. <laughs> we were, he was. Um, he used to stand on his stool at the beginning of wherever you want, and there's some footage somewhere yeah. of him going like that. Was <laughs> he's fallen over? <laughs> and I tell you, we got on the bus and he put it on me. He said, and we watched it. And all of a sudden, we saw it. We must have watched it 30 times. <laughs> and we were just pissing yeah. on a jiggy. Oh, yeah. Oh, so funny. Yeah. Um, before we've actually interviewed up, I must ask you. We said we have lost Rick. What's your, what's your greatest memories of Rick? I got. Um, I think the, the um, one of my great memories of Rick is when I first joined the band. I think it's one of the things that probably got me totally in the band. Although I asked, I asked Francis about after about eight gigs. Oh, we went off. We did go off to do some stuff in Eastern Europe, but I think Dubai was the first, yeah. I believe. Um, and I said, I. I'd like to know because you know, am I in the band? He said, "Oh, you've been in since day one. We were just doing. We just want to check out your mate, which was Jeff." Oh, I know Jeff. But yeah. Um, but uh, my funny story is, well, we we, we were um, we, when I first joined the band, we were in Brest in a really posh restaurant, and he got slaughtered, and it was really posh. And you could see the end. The maitre d' was really getting the um. He said, oh, yeah. I speak I speak French. I said, oh, no, so I'm sorry. I said, I'll film one peep, and. Um, he said, ah, oh, monsieur, monsieur, fais moi un peep. And the bloke, you could see the steam coming out of his ears. He turned around and stormed off. And Rick said, what did I just say? I said, oh, give us a blowjob. <laughs> and uh, so that was, um, that, and I actually think, you yeah. know, that was that was a good fun because everybody yeah. laughed. But um, my memories of Rick, through the 90s, through the 90s, we were very close. He, when, he'd moved, when he moved to Spain, I was... I never thought that that was a particularly good idea. That when he moved to Spain and all that, I think he should have. Well, for him personally. Him. Yeah. I never thought that that was. Um... He said to me once. He said something really sad. He said, "You know, every major decision I've made in my life, I've been drunk." And that was a really sad thing mm. to say, you know. Um. But no, in the nineties, I mean, um, he actually moved. <laughs> moved to be near me. No, he, he was moving. I said, well, come and live, I live in Teddington. He said, come, I said, come and live in Teddington, it's great. And he said, you sure? I said, absolutely. He said, and he said, all right. And he moved to Teddington. He was, we were the Teddy Boys. We, he was there for 15 years, 20 yeah. years, you know, and we were, we were really close. You know, because we, well, because we lived around the corner yeah, to each yeah. other, you know, we used to write a lot. Yeah. And then he started writing with someone else, which I didn't, and uh, I didn't like the songs that he wrote. And I don't, I, I wasn't me being, uh, yeah. you know, sc scorned or whatever, but I was just, I didn't think that, uh, I didn't like what he was coming up with. I thought, you know, people might not like what we come yeah. up with, but at least it was more of the, of the, uh, the rockier bluesy thing mm. as opposed to uh, 80s pop. Because he could be a bit chitty, could, you know, he could pile on the fromage sometimes, Rick. <laughs> and, um... Obviously, status quo continues to this day. And mm -hmm. it defines... To defines opinion, it's a you know, keyboard one that's like, oh, blah, 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 but he's, he's still like band, there's still other guys in the band. Mm. It continues, he's still playing good concerts. I saw it Wacken last year. Oh, it was great. You know, amazing, it's about 80,000 fans, he, he packed it out, you know, everybody come out of tents. You there? Oh, yeah, 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 I was there. No, I couldn't get any way to the front, that's how packed out it was, yeah. you know, I had to watch it from way, Oh, way you know, back. it's funny, I mean, when, when Rip was alive as well, I, I was, I never quite got... You know, I know that there was a lot of people saying, "Well, we were doing we were doing Download and Hellfest. They should be doing this for the Frantic Four and all that." And I was a, I wasn't nervous. I was a bit um, dubious mm. as to how we'd go. And we tore it up. Yeah, it can't be a good tune. It can't be a good tune, exactly. Yeah. And you know, and a band like Quo is like it's it's you know you got yeah, which yeah. I love. I mean, I love I love my metal, but. And Quo comes along, it's like a bit of, you know, it's like a bit of sunshine. Yeah. You can see the crowd, everyone was smiling, everyone's yeah, rocking and rolling. I mean. you know. uh, I've always maintained, as I said earlier, it's music to get yeah. drunk to. Without Rick, though, does, has it fired you not up? Do you work harder now at a live situation? Mm. Mm. It's different. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the grind that it had. Rick's playing had a certain grind about it, which made which made him such an amazing player. I'm a huge fan. He's the only rhythm guitar player I know. That kind of thing is better than me. Mm. But I learned a lot from him. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, I learned from the best. Um, also, there's a few songs that now you have to handle the vocals for as well. 
Yeah, I mean, well, you know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I get slagged for it, and it's rain. I do, you know, the song. Yeah. Um, well, I try, you know, because I don't want I, I, I don't want the, the uh, those songs to go away. I yeah, don't want yeah, it exactly. to be buried in the annals yeah, yeah, of time, yeah. you know. I think the, what, what older fans have got to realise is that every time a band plays a gig, there's always something in the audience is seeing the status quo for the first time. And that's the most important thing. That's, pers- that's what you're aiming at, is the, that young person. I met a girl tonight, and she's come over to... I did a meet and greet earlier. She's come over from Israel. And she saw us in Moscow when she was nine, and she told me that she threw up her fluffy toy, mm. and I and I and they had ignored it, and she said I got it and put it on my amplifier, yeah. and she said that was it. She said I was just hooked on status quo. And she's come over from Israel Brilliant. to see me today. That's what yeah. it's all about. And the one last fluffy toy. <laughs> Fluffy guy. Easy, yeah. <laughs> I've got the hair. <laughs> One last thing. I thought you live in Tennant and um, you're born in Chiswick. Brentford football fan. Oh, only a, oh, listen, life is fantastic. We're sold out here tonight. Yeah. This is, exi- which is, my, this is exactly what I want Rhino's events to be. I want to go and play little clubs. I want to yeah. bang them out, have great fun. We've had some... Inc- um, we've The support band didn't turn up in Manchester, so yeah. we christened ourselves the Bloody Awfuls. <laughs> And after we'd done our set, we just took a five-minute break and came yeah. back and just, right, who knows revolution, right, yeah. let's do that. Who knows born to be wild, yeah. right, let's do that. And we yeah. just went out and played. And that's yeah. what I want to do, you know, keep it light. Yeah. Quo is, it's a different it's a different animal. I just want people to come yeah. away with a smile on their face for, for different reasons. I can't sing like Francis Rossi. I didn't, yeah. I, I didn't find rocking all over the world, you know. I'm just doing yeah. my, doing my shtick. Yeah. But yes, yeah, and, and the, the reason I said that is because not only that, is that the bees are going to win at Fulham tomorrow. Yeah, so well, I was wondering if you could get to Brentford. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, so I, do I, you often go to see them play, play or not? season tickets. Oh, yeah, stand, you can still stand. You, yeah, yeah, because it's great. Well, I mean, well I'm, I'm, since I've been to London, I'm sort of a soft spot for Fulham. But I do like the Brentford. Well, I've probably West London teams. <laughs> I've been to Brentford, I've been there. Great, great little stadium. Cause I know it's perfect. Right I know, in your face, I, I, isn't it? They've got beautiful fake gardens just at the back. <laughs> no, and we're going to beat Fulham tomorrow, which is yeah. great because Fulham haven't lost for 20 games. Yeah. So, is, 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 like I say, you almost. I've written songs about Brentford players. Yeah. And the team, and I, I mean the song I've written about a guy called Lord Owusu, who I've become quite good friends with. Yeah. I didn't realise it, so it's the campest football song <laughs> ever. <laughs> you know, I mean it's quite funny. Really. I mean it's still good. It's got, you know, yeah. it's got good lyrics. So what's that like? You at Brentford and you hear your song over the uh, the speakers. We um, well, we did one another one. I did one when they played at the Millennium Stadium. Um, I was in the bog when they played the video. And uh, they'd played the song twice before we got yeah. there, and the car was late, so I didn't I didn't get to see the video or yeah. hear the song. <laughs> I've heard the other one once yeah. in Brentford. Yeah, it's yeah, it was great. Yeah, it's great. Super Wembley once actually. They played the Oval in a playoff. But they lost oh yeah, the I was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? Oh, I was so angry. I was fucking livid because <laughs> they just blew it. You know, yeah, it was yeah. so crap. Um, I went up the following year. Oh yeah, it was really funny when the Awusu thing came yeah. out. Right, I, I was um. I was when I was sitting. I was sitting behind this bloke, and he was reading the local paper, right? And, the, and he's looking. This thing on the back page, and there's a picture of me, and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> "That was funny, you know." So I was like, "Yes, it's me." Yeah. <laughs> right. right, been fantastic talking to you. Come and check this band out. Rhino's well, Revenge, because uh, rocking. We've 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 had the idea of a good time. This band are it. So check them out. And you got the album out. Rhino's Revenge too. So yes, go and get it. And while you're at it, get the other one as well. Yeah. <laughs> Sold out. Oh well. No, we've run out. Oh, right. So yeah, we've done ten thousand. And we must be we press on, on the line somewhere. Uh, I'd like to think so, but it's Eagle. I don't know what I don't know if the Eagle exists now. Oh, it certainly does. We're doing more the videos, the DVDs. Yep. Oh yeah, they do DVDs. Yeah. Uh, I'll point in the right direction. We'll talk about it afterwards. All right. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>